Hi, and welcome back to our for statistics and data science. Right, last time we talked about subsetting matrices. We used square brackets to extract elements by row and column index, blank spaces to call all elements in a dimension, and we called elements by column or row name. In this lesson, we will talk about matrix arithmetic, which I expect will remind you a lot of doing arithmetic with vectors. It should be nice and easy and quick. All right, matrices are just vectors or their brothers, okay? This means that they share a lot of their properties. Do you remember the mechanics of vector operations? Well, they happen in element-wise manner. This holds true for matrices too. Let's try scaling a matrix first. I will super quickly create a matrix with the box office data for a new movie franchise. We're stepping away from Harry Potter for a little bit. A matrix with the matrices grosses in the US and worldwide. Great! We have a simple 3 by 2 matrix telling us how the movies from the Matrix franchise fared on US soil and worldwide. That's it, we're all set to jump right into the calculations. Notice that the figures in our matrix are in millions in US dollars. Well, what if I wanted to convert the millions into billions? For example, because I have other data I want to compare this to, and that data is in billions. Well, in this case, I can use the scalar multiplication. Scalar operations comprise multiplying or dividing an entire structure by a single number. In this case, because I want the data in billions, I will divide my matrix by a thousand and get the desired result. Like this. See, the operation happened element by element, just like it did with vectors. Fantastic! So, what if I wanted to know how much each movie made after we subtract the money that went into producing the movie? Of course, the movies had different budgets, but their average is $121 million. To find out the margin for the Matrix movies, we just need to subtract 121 from the matrix.mat, and there you have it. Notice that the command was again executed on element-by-element -element basis. Okay, so this holds true for all arithmetic operations. Alright, but what about the more interesting stuff, like matrix-by-matrix -matrix arithmetic? Well, those are also governed by the same rules. Everything will happen element-wise. For example, if we take the margin calculation we did before, but this time decided to use the real budgets for each movie instead of their average, we can create another 2 by 3 matrix with the information and subtract it from matrix.mat. Like this. And, as before, the operation is happening cell by cell. Okay, so did you notice how we made the budget matrix just now? We passed three values, one for each row, and asked R to create two columns. Because the vector we passed was only of length 3, and we are asking R for a matrix that has six values, or is 3 by 2, R recycled the vector and created it for us, repeating the three values twice. To be very honest, we didn't need to do that because R will recycle even if we had simply subtracted a vector with the values 63, 150, and 150 from the matrix.mat matrix. Let's try it out. Yeah, 
awesome, the result we get is identical with the one before, because R recognizes the vector and the matrix as being of different sizes and does whatever it can to rectify this for the operation at hand. In other words, it recycles. Fantastic. Let's move on to matrix multiplication. If you have been paying attention to everything we've said so far, it will be painfully obvious to you that when you multiply two matrices together, the operations will happen how? Element by element. Good. Let's have a quick look. I will multiply the box office gross for the franchise by a 3 by 2 matrix storing the numbers from 1 to 6. It works just like expected. If you are a linear algebra enthusiast, however, you may be hoping that matrix multiplication happens the way traditional matrix multiplication is supposed to happen. If this is what you're after, you just have to ask nicely. Inner multiplication happens when you use this operator and outer multiplication when you use this one. Don't forget to transpose though. We did this with the t function, remember? Of course, if you truly are a linear algebra enthusiast, that's probably the first thing that came to mind, didn't it? Okay, I will finish the lesson on this note, and next time we'll switch the focus a little bit to more mathematically inclined matrix operations like finding column and row sums, averaging, and so on. For more videos like this one, please subscribe.